Hello guys, welcome to another video. So in this tutorial, we're going to choose a open source AI agent. It's called a Sona agent from Cortex AI. If you go to Cortex.com, you can see this beautiful interface and you can register a free account. If you do not want to install it by yourself or you do not want to run it on your local machine, so you can go ahead and register your account and try it out. Is it pretty good? So I have installed this uh, open source AI agent which i'm going to show you guys how to do that step by step in this video but before doing that let's try it out uh, on a self-hosted instance to see how this works so for example if you uh, already logged in so you should be able to see something like this because it is a local hosted or self-hosted so you can see that uh, the credit is unlimited or maybe it is limited, but uh, you cannot actually see the change. If you go to the settings, so you can see that um, there's billing section, the user section, because it's on local, so you can see everything uh, is uh, available, so for free. So let's go back to this interface. So let's, for example, let's try something, let's um, just do some market research. So if you enter the prompt and hit enter, you can choose a worker, but we keep it as a default. Uh, just hit enter. So you can see it spin up the agent right away. But you also can see some errors. Uh, just ignore that. It should be okay. As you can see, everything has been spin up. It's starting creating tasks, and also there's still planning and strategy, strategy analyzing stuff like that. So they're searching web. They start searching web, and you can see there are seven tasks. It was created, and it will start the web search first. You can see it's awesome, and the interface is beautiful. It's very similar to Manus. So you can see also the steps, live updates, and how many queries have been run. So very good. Okay, you can also see the query by just clicking the arrows left and right, and it's starting to scrape the website. So, but we'll just skip for the demo purpose. You can try it out after everything's set up. You can just follow the tutorial and set it up and try it out for yourself. So that being said, let's dive in. Okay, let's just hit cancel here. So to do the demo, we just use uh, kegel.com, so which I always do in this channel. So let's go to kegel.com first. If you have not seen the Cortex AI GitHub repo, it is uh, cortex.ai. Dash AI Suna, so that's the repo. So this is on Apache license. You can just use it for your own project or businesses. And you can see there's a lot of stars already. People really like it, and there's a lot of contributors. Um, if you want to self-host it, they do have a script you can run. But I think there's a lot of complications, and it's also a lot of things that are confusing in this setup. So I built this video to show you what actually needs to be done. To actually spin up the agent like you just saw. So let's go to the Kegel notebook. So, first thing, you have to install all the dependencies. Uh, for example, you have to install Redis first. Uh, you can also Google it or you can just ask the LM to give you some of the script. You can install Redis. Then you have to install the latest, probably not latest, but the stable version of the node version. So then you have to install a kernel if you're running on notebook, but you do not need this step if you're running on a local machine or you're running on the virtual box. So, but this is just a demo. If you do want to use kernel, you can use local kernel, and you can get the URL from the local kernel, or you can just use ungrok as the other option. So you should be able to get also another uh, public URL like this one. So, but you can choose one of those to install the tunneling. 
After that, you can start install the Suna. So you just do a git clone. So you can uh, just clone this REPL, which is public. So um, And then CD to this REPL. You do need to set up the configuration keys. So this is required for both the front end and back end. So first, let's configure the uh, back end. So you just write a new file. It's called that env file then make sure this is on local so you're doing actual local testing so it's not on production also you need to generate the encryption key so this is something um kind of confusing so encryption key is something that you spy sooner internally uh, if you go to their github repl uh, go to the setup and you can get the encryption key by searching this encryption key and after that you should be able to get two functions. One is for generate encryption key and also the other one is generate admin API key. So run this on your local machine, you should be able to get both keys. Let's go back to cable.com. So the encryption key is the one for the encryption key. The admin encryption key is the Cortex admin API key. So you can copy and paste those. Also, there's another one which is called MCP credential encryption key. You can use the same thing that you use to create the encryption key. So this will be confusing, so I want to uh, talk about it here. And then you have to upgrade the Superbase URL, right? Update these URLs for um, connecting to Superbase instance. So uh, you can get everything from Superbase console. If you do not know how to get it, uh, you can DM me or leave a comment in this video. And after that, make sure you install the Daytona. So this is the Docker container alike platform, but it's really not a Docker local solution. This is a really scalable solution. So it's like Kubernetes, but um, you can just call the API to spin up a container remotely. So that's what Daytona does. So it's a very good project and it is also have a free tier. So you can just register a free account on Daytona. So uh, let me show you a bit uh, how that looks like. So let's go back to the other page. So you can see this uh, Daytona. So once you spin up Daytona, you should be able to see a instance spin up from here. So once you actually create an agent and make a request, you will create a container to run this uh, request. So you can see this is a request we just run which is the one that we tested in here, right? So you can see there's a pod or a container spin up to run the job. So let's go back to the Kego notebook. So after you get the Daytona registered, then you should be able to get API key and make sure you paste the server URL. You need to configure the LLM providers. Uh, in this case, we use the open router. You can choose the other ones. Um, I will show later why we use open router or you can choose other ones, but we will demo everything using open router in this video. And then you do need to set up the Redis host. You can keep it as default because we set it up earlier in this video. And after that, you can set up the uh, Tavli and also the Firecrawl just for the search, but they have also other default search like CRX search so you don't have to worry about it but if you do prefer the tablet and also the fire crop then you can add the API key here you need to set up the web hook base URL if you want to use web hook but in this case we do not you can also set it here and then you need to set up the front end next so make sure you um, get the public super base URL and super base anon key paste it in here. Then you also need the backend URL, which is the public domain. You spin up, either use local terminal, you can use your self-hosted domain name. Um, so this is basically the backend API, and the other one is public URL, which is the front end. That should be it. Also make sure you add the Cortex admin API key, the same as the front and backend. So that's the configurations, which is a little bit more complicated, but uh, those are the configurations you should be able to uh, set. So and then you have to install the Sona dependencies for the front end and back end. So the first one 
is the backend, go to the backend folder, run a UV uh, virtual environment, and then run a UV sync to install the dependencies. Then for the front end, just go to the front end folder and do npm install to install all the front end dependencies. And after that, make sure you run a pro, uh, optimized build for the front end. So this is all you need to prepare the sooner dependencies and also some of the packages you need and the configurations. Then you have to migrate the database. So to do that, uh, you have to go to the Sona backend folder and then you have to install the Superbase client API or client CLI. And then after that, uh, make sure you do a Superbase login using the Superbase token. So, and after you log in, then you should be able to link to the project uh, basically, this is a project. Uh, you need to create your own password. Uh, I'll re remove everything after the demo, but you can see basically you just need your uh, Superbase project ID and also the password to actually uh, link this project to uh, Superbase. Then you have to do a DB push to sync all the schema for the Sona project with Superbase with the same uh, DB password. So that should be it. So this is actually how you sync the database schema so you can see the database is up to date so after everything is run correctly you see everything is up to date so that's it and that's how you link everything to the superbase so then once everything is updated in superbase you have to also update the base jump table so this is a very important step so you need to update two tables uh, first is to make sure the user that's logged in you can see that it is in the author or users table then you have to update that user in the base jump the accounts table if it is not exists so make sure the id and primary owner user id is using the id that you uh, created or you logged in uh, so this is actually basically user id then you also have to update the base jump account user table use the same user id so and also set account role to owner so this is basically for testing purpose, but on production, it might be different. Then the next step is to add course domain. So this is uh, something that is uh, very also important. So uh, this backend API, they do restrict it by domain. So make sure uh, all the customized domain or the local terminal domain is added to the allowed domains. So in this case it would be a ungrok domain. So you can see everything has to be added in here to make sure the API works. So you can cat this file to make sure this is added. So then you have to update the LLM. So this is not actually documented. So the default LLM is using GPT, uh, GPT-5, I think. Uh, then all the other configurations is not gonna work if this is hard coded as a GPT-5. So in order to use other models, we have to manually change that. So for example, you have to change for open router usage case, you have to update this file to go to this line, which is the call LLM to change the model to your desired model. In this case, we're actually using the open router XAI Grok 4.1, which was just released not long ago. So we have to change this line. Also, make sure that you updated the available providers in here. So in this case, we'll update the model list to use um, open router. So you can see this basically the open router API and also the API endpoint model name and also the API key. So you have to update everything. Again, I will remove everything after the recording, but uh, you can see how it works. And then also, if you want to use a local model, you can choose Olama, then you can also use Olama as well. So but that's it. Um, make sure you, re you remove fallbacks if you don't need them. So because we're actually using open router, so all these bad rock models are not needed. And after that, um, it should be ready to go. So before you run the agent, make sure you install supervisor or maybe systemd. So you can use 
um, supervisor for the uh, testing purpose also uh, just create uh, four configurations for supervisor so once for the redis make sure uh, you spin up a redis using the redis server then you have to install the front end service so basically this just just npm to run the front end and also you have to set up the back end service which is the uh, using G Unicorn to actually call the API app. You can also use the Python call the API.py file, but in this case would be nicer. So you can use UV to actually just spin up the G Unicorn so you can see everything. Oh, my one thing is to actually bind the port to a IP6 port also. So this is actually IP6 and IP4 both compatible. So you can bind to this format, then that should be it for the backend. So then also need to spin up the backend worker. So the backend worker will basically use the uh, dramatic. So you can use UV to run the dramatic and also spin up the uh, four threads. Also any threads you want to spin up and also call this function from agent background. So that's all the four configurations you have to set up for the supervisor. If you want to use supervisor, if you use systemd, you need to configure four different systemd files. You can see everything is running. And after that, you can uh, install engines for the reverse proxy. So in this case, we configure the engines to something like this. So you can just check out this configuration file. So to add it to your own project configuration. So that should be it. Then if everything works correctly, then you should be able to see something that we demo earlier in this video. So Hopefully this is helpful. If you do like this video, please subscribe, like, or comment if you have any questions. And last but not least, if you want to track everything in the Superbase, you can see something like this. Uh, all these tables that are synced, as we mentioned earlier in this video. So you can see there's a lot of tables here for this agent. And so if the DB is synced up correctly, you should be able to see all these tables. So, that being said, hopefully this is helpful. If you do like this video, please subscribe, like, or comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and see you in the next one.